All right, today's video, we're going to talk about the mill surface block in 3D import. The mill surface block gives us a conversational way to do surfacing using a ball nose end mill or something that would typically we would have to do in NC. So we're going to be able to surface shapes using a ball nose end mill, and we're going to have a few control parameters that we can set on how the tool behaves, what kind of step over, what kind of step down, uh, what are we leaving for um, finish allowances and containment of the tool, things like that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start a new program. We want to make sure we're in a conversational program. So we'll do new conversational. Then we're going to go to our graphics screen. And because we're doing something with 3D import, we're going to open these two window panes, one at the bottom and one at the left, because there's going to be some information that it's going to ask for. And obviously some of the programming buttons and things will be um, appear on this left pane. So I'm going to go ahead and import a solid model. It's a step file. I'm going to go to import, go out and find the file that I want. I'm going to bring this uh, moonscape in. And it's going to open that solid model in the software. Now, the way we program from this <clears throat> is we're going to go ahead and select any of the surfaces that we want to program from. So if I were to click on a surface, it's going to highlight it. If I click on this one, it's going to highlight that. I'm going to do visible only, and I'm going to select everything that is visible by using a window. If I had unclicked visible only, it would have gotten everything even on the sides that I can't see. I have purposely not grabbed these items here that are left gray. I can go in and select them now if I wanted, but I'm purposely leaving those out. And I'll do the, this one here just because I want to show you something else we can do with this block after we've programmed a surface using the 3D import. So I have all of the blocks or all of the surfaces that I want to program from. I'm going to go down here to, and you'll notice that the only one of these that is available to click on is the mill surface block because a mill frame, a pocket, things like that cannot be used to program this. It's going to create the same type of tool path we would in NC. So I'm going to select on that. Because I want a five axis machine, I can tilt, I can grab one of these handles and rotate the work plane so I can keep the tool tilted all the time if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that because a lot of you won't have a five axis machine and you're just going to do this vertically. So I'm going to leave it as the Z axis pointing vertical right here, the blue. And I just select the approve checkbox, check mark. It's asking me here to please click on the top of the feature for the Z start. That's optional. Whether I click on something or I don't, I can adjust that in the block. So I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to select anything. And I'm just going to select or click the approve check mark. Now, it has created a DXF 3D block imported into the program. So if I go to the program now, I'll see I have a mill surface block. We'll double click on that. And this is where we have some of the information that I was telling you that we can add or change in here. First one is a Z start. Where am I going to begin? I'm going to start 10,000 below the surface. I'm not going to worry about changing that right now. That is what it's selected on its own, but I could change that if I had um, an eighth inch material or so above the part. I could add a 0.125 or whatever I needed to. So this is where I adjust my Z start. The tool containment, you'll notice that it says to contact point. That is right here to the bottom center of the uh, ball nose radius. If I change that to outer edge, then you can see that it's going to keep that tool, the full diameter contained within the surface boundaries that I selected. I want to go to the contact point. I have some tabs here for roughing, finishing, independently. I'm going to select a tool. I'm going to select a half inch ball nose end mill. I have some milling types or some finishing um, 
things that I can do. I can do adaptive path one way or zigzag. So it's going to use our high speed machining algorithms to, to clear this out. Or I can do it as a spiral. I'm going to go ahead and do it as a spiral. So it's going to actually start inside or outside and spiral all the way across that part, doing it in a spiraling fashion. Stock allowance, if I want to leave it anything for a finish tool, I would put in the value here that I want to leave on all surfaces. I'm going to leave it at zero. I'm not even going to put in a finishing tool, but if I wanted to, I could select finishing tool, give it a tool number, and then we have some types here to choose from as well. I'm just going to do a rough spiral, no finish allowance. Do a peck depth of 125, just so this doesn't take forever to graph. And I've got a 50% step over of the tool. So it's going to step over 50% each time I, or each time it makes a pass, it'll step over 50% of the tool. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and draw that. It'll take a couple seconds because it's processing that tool path in the background. And depending on how intricate this is, what kind of step over, step down you have, it's going to determine how long it takes to create this. Okay, so now I have programmed all of these surfaces being cut using the ball nose end mill that I selected. And we had a lot of the same type of, of controls that we would have had with NC, but I was able to do that conversationally. One thing is I cannot get to the code. I can't see what the tool path is doing and I can't do any kind of altering of the tool path. It literally becomes, look at it here, a block within a conversational program called mill surface. Outside of the controls that you see on the screen here, I have no other control of this particular block. But let's take a look here because I missed selecting some of the features or some of the, the surfaces, you can notice that we're diving into the part here. We're diving into it in some other places. And we need to be able to go in and reselect those. But right now, I don't know what the problem is. I'm not sure what it is that I missed. So when I drew my box across the part, I thought I got all the surfaces that I wanted. I must have missed a couple. Which ones did I miss? How do I, how do I fix this? Well, the first thing I can do is I'm going to go to my program. I'm going to go to program manager and I'm going to save this program just like I normally would any conversational program with a name. I'm going to do a save as on my desktop. And I'm going to call it moonscape. And I hit save. So now I have that program saved as a conversational program somewhere on my computer thumb drive, on the machine, wherever. Now I'm going to start a new conversational program. I'm going to go to my graphics. I'm going to clear the tool path and I'm going to clear the solid. I want to get rid of that. I don't want it open right now. Now I'm going to go out and import the actual conversational program that I just saved, but it's only going to bring into this screen the surfaces that I selected before. So I'm going to import, I'm going to go to uh, desktop, moonscape, I'll double click on that. Now it brought it in as a default color of black, but if I get, if I go here and I select it, then I can change the color by selecting. This is the imported so surfaces here. I'll just change this to a green and unselect it. So there we go. Well, now I can see that not all of the surfaces that I thought I had selected were selected. So I can rotate this around and now take note of the surfaces that I need to reselect. I can do that one of two ways. I can go back to my original program and do it from there by starting all over, or I can, pro I can import the same Moonscape solid here Uh, Moonscape. It will import that into here, and then I could go in and reselect everything that I wanted, reprogram it, and now I would have to copy and paste that block, put it back in my original program, or continue to program from this 
newly created program that I have here. So two ways to go back in and reselect that, but it's uh, pretty handy to be able to, to import those solids or those surfaces from a program and be able to see what it was that you may have missed when you programmed it, programmed it the original time.